it's that time again. It's that time again when really you need to get serious about planning your next calendar year. Even though we still have months left to go in this one, I'm telling you that right now, if you are trying to stack up for your best possible 12 months ever, now is the time to be doing it. So I'm recording this in almost mid-September, and it really doesn't matter what year it is, because although we know the world can go wonky now, we've lived through it, and maybe it will again, but There are certain things that still ring true based on a calendar year that will always be true for us. And you may plan your fiscal year, July to July, but the bulk of us still start fresh. We have these things that happen first quarter, second quarter, third quarter. And in this episode, we're really going to dive into five fall fitness and health professional business growth strategies that I think you'll find number one are very simple, number two, very actionable, and number three, what more do you want than simple and actionable? (laughs) But I think you'll find that these are eternal and evergreen. You can come back to them again and again, maybe for checks throughout the year. I'm Deborah Atkinson. You're listening to She Means Fitness Business. It's a division of Voice for Fitness where we all know that you want to be yourself, an inspirational example to other midlife women. And in order to do that, we all need a profitable health and fitness coaching business. And the problem, usually lack of clients or a lack of revenue from those clients. You're undercharging. And I see it all the time. I'm working with sometimes privately or touching base with someone on a complimentary bonus call and realizing you're you're just way undercharging. And if we look at the amount of time you're putting in in order to gain this much revenue, it's just not a business model that you can sustain. And I know we'd all say, but I love it. You know, I would do this for free, but you don't want to do it for free. And in part, you want to hold your customers accountable. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to get in to grab my business scorecard. It's a scorecard I designed specifically for business professionals, health and wellness professionals, who I know don't love necessarily to market and sell, but actually want to be delivering, want to be focused on the exercise and the motivation of people and giving them the wins that they personally have had, almost always, themselves. So in order to do this, you can go through this checklist, you get that scorecard, you'll know in two minutes, where do I have gaps? What do I need to focus on? Now, you may not know the exact steps to take, but you'll know where do I start looking for resources that will help me do it. So you can stop feeling like your dream might be slipping away if you're backed into a corner with no more time or energy or money in order to do what you really want to do. And you can start actually easily increasing your revenue. And you should be able to do that so simply within 90 days, increasing your revenue by at least 5,000 a month. And, And I'm saying increase it and stay there. And potentially, once you do that, you can do it again, and you can do it again, and I promise. So let's dive into this. All right, fall is here. Definitely fall. Fitness and health professional business growth strategies are here as well. What you do now not only determines how you finish this year, but how you start the next year. The last quarter of your year is always pivotal. You currently have enough data. It's perfect timing, right? So you've got enough data from the last nine months to look at what's happened this year, what went well, what didn't go well. You can determine your revenue sources. You can look at your best sellers, your time and your energy drains, and and best decide where to eliminate, where to condense. Maybe you want to combine some programs, fold one into another. Maybe you just want to archive because deleting feels too permanent because that's the last choice. Sometimes deleting is necessary in order to make room to really promote something else that's already working really, really well. Most of all, you want to know right now where you are according to your goal for each and every month of 2023 as the year we're in. But if you're listening to this next year, this is evergreen, just insert the year it is now. Are you ahead? Are you behind? Are you right on target? And why do you know 
why that is. Maybe you pivoted. Maybe you hired new staff people that in the long run will help free you of time so you can create more and more revenue from it. But you may have to go backward a step or two before you go forward. That is normal and natural, but you want to know the exact why. You don't want to be guessing. You need to be able to look at what worked and what didn't. You always want to have a goal a monthly goal, and then a weekly goal, and sometimes a daily goal. When it comes to a podcast, for instance, we have a number of downloads that I want every month for each of our shows. And with social media posts, I want a certain amount of engagement every single week. And if I don't get it, I'm going to look seriously at the content we posted. I'm going to look at, did we have a wise use of tags? Was the copy there? Was it SEO friendly? And if you're not looking at your Instagram posts that way, I certainly highly recommend that you look back at a very recent episode that I released with the Instagram expert and you're welcome. So she gave some really golden tips and I would I highly recommend you go back and do that. And you want to be doing the same. You're running your YouTube channel like a business. Are you titling? Are you using descriptions? Are you using tags to your best advantage? And making sure that also in the links that you're putting in, that you're doing everything possible to give yourself some lift. You want to know right now where you are according to your goal for each month of last year and have that goal something that you're ready to amplify for the next year. I usually sit back in this last three months, usually October, by sometime in October, I'm spending a week or a long weekend sitting down and creating my launch calendar. My That's our business programs when they're launching. And I'm also creating the opportunities for collaboration. So, you know, if I know a partner is releasing a book or a friend is hosting a summit and they've put out a save the date and I've said, yes, I'm going to participate there needs to be room on my publishing calendar to put that out there so that A, I'm not overwhelming my audience and B, I'm also saving space to give this justice if I've said yes, because number one, I want it to be successful because often it's a revenue generator for us, one outside of us, but still a revenue generator. And we want our audience to get the use and the benefit out of something that we've said, this is going to be good for them. We know they need it. So it's got to be a win-win all the way around, but you have to plan that. So some people will say they want daily engagement goals on their social media. And because they do that, they know that they're going to get a certain return in terms of traffic and lead generation because they're doing a call to action. So think about you know, what that would mean for you if you had a goal daily, weekly, and you weren't reaching it, what would it be that you would do in order to get it? what would you change? And can you see directly, and hopefully you are monitoring this, then you can through your uh, Google Analytics. If you're not already using that, you need somebody on your team who knows how to set you up so you can see how much traffic is coming into specific pages and what are your traffic sources? Do you have a traffic coming in from Instagram, from YouTube, from Facebook, whatever it is they might be using so you can see if it's working? or it's not working. And, you know, if you're spending 40% of your time on social media doing Instagram posts and you're getting zero traffic back to your website from it, something needs to change, right? You only have a limited amount of time and just beating your head against that wall because you want it to work is not necessarily going to make it true. So look at what are organic sources and you may want to simply switch gears, go to that organic source and push the accelerator on it. And, you know, like delete is a strong word, maybe just archive and don't nurture that other social media site as much. But the biggest point here is that only when you know what your goal is, where you're running, do you know how to get there. 
You otherwise won't figure it out. If you're just going to say, well, I'm going to host a masterclass and see how many I can get there. And then from that, I'm going to sell into a program and see how many I can get there. Well, it's actually really a very specific numbers game. You know, if you have X amount of registrants for a masterclass, you may be lucky if you get 20% to show up live. And those 20% are the most likely buyers taking the next step. But about 3%, maybe 5 if you're very, very high, of those will buy. So let's say you get 20 registrants. You know, you're not going to have very many people show up, right? So you're probably also not going to sell very many. So you really want to set goals and then decide, I'm going to do whatever it takes to get that many people there. So yes, we all start somewhere. And that's when you perfect your content. But let's dive into this. And that was just a long stranded answer. And if you're looking for more support or hosting or will be hosting a mastermind. We're going to go month to month. There's no obligation. If you are in it, you're getting something out of it. You'll stay in it. I just know that. So it keeps me on my toes, keeps you engaged, and hopefully you're growing and you're coming to the coaching calls with questions that not only you, but other people will benefit from. We're going to do a founding members rate and um, that'll be significant amount off of the regular rate. So if you want in, you'll lock in your monthly membership at that for as long as you're a concurrent member. So all you have to do is respond to us at flipping50 or at support at flipping50.com. And that's all words spelled flipping50.com. Here we go. Five fall business strategies. These are going to go quick. You may want to take notes or you can come over to the show notes where I took them for you. Number one is be early, not late. And that's really the emphasis of all of these that I'm going to read from here on out. And I've started this, right? It's mid-September. Right now, you should be planning January. January, February, and March is your first quarter. What's going to happen? Because if you don't know now, you don't know what you're promoting in November and December because you should not wait till January to promote the things you're launching in January. It's already sailed. That ship has sailed. If not somebody else, I've already advertised to them, right? So make sure that you are out there and ahead of the gate. You can't be way too early before people are thinking about it, but you also do not want to be late. People are thinking about weight gain. Women in midlife are thinking about weight gain and the discomfort and the clothes that don't fit them while they're going to those holiday parties, not after. I know a significant number of people that wait and say they're going to wait till after the holidays, and so do you, but there are many, many more people who are thinking about it in advance of that. So be early, not wait. Don't wait until the last minute to plan your content, the guests on your show that you will interview, the ads, the partnerships that you will want because you don't want to be slapping those things up last minute. Number two, and this is also being ahead, plan your first six months of 2024. So just now I mentioned the first quarter, but you want to take that into the first six months. Your life will be so much easier. And let's think of it this way. The busiest time for a health or fitness or wellness professional is January, February, and March, right? So you don't necessarily want to be in the heat of doing it, the thing, leading, teaching, coaching, and have to be planning April, May, and June. And chances are, because you won't do it if you put it off, you're going to be behind by the time you're in May. Your goal for the year will be behind, but not if you plan it now. So you've got it on the calendar. You know the content. The next step to put on your calendar is the action time to create that content. So you're blocking off regular time on Thursday and Friday mornings, two hours each to write the posts, write the blogs, create the graphics, or monitor and approve the content someone else has created for you if that's how it's going at your place, right? So 
plan your first six months, and that would include all of your launches, all of the programs that you are launching and starting. Put down the start dates, but that's not a launch. The launch occurs six to eight weeks before that happens. That is the crucial time because that's launch time when you're putting out the content you're using the ads, you are partnering with people and getting them to, um, getting audience members or listeners to come into your world via lead magnet. That launch time is not your program time. That is the time, the runway, six to eight weeks prior to the program. Plan that and block off your calendar. Because during that time, you don't want a lot of extracurricular things going on. You want to be leading up to your program and creating interest and excitement about the opening of it and doing whatever it takes to have people feel and think what they need to before they become your customers. The second thing you want to plan is your content publishing Think about what blog, what podcast, what YouTube video, what part of your publishing calendar will happen when, what will be the topic. You don't have to really flesh the whole thing out, but you got to have an idea. And then three, on your publishing calendar, that first six months, your collaborations. Who will you partner with? Who will you promote? Will you promote a Flipping 50 event? Will you promote... Um, some kind of a tool that your clients use to be more successful. And maybe that is a massage gun. Maybe that is a uh, supplement. Maybe that is a power plate. Will you partner an affiliate and promote that? Or another individual who's selling something and you're going to affiliate for them. So number three, so let's review. Be early, not late get a head start on this. Don't wait till the last minute. Number two is plan your first six months of 2024. And I mean, in depth, I mean, look at what has to happen, lay it out on a calendar. These are the dates of the program. Therefore, these six to eight weeks are the runway. Block those off. I like those big wall calendars where you can mark on them. You can erase if you want to, but you're also then able to see the big picture. Like this is all in green. If you have programs that are run at different times a year, the same program, you can block those runways off in green content that you use early in the year. Maybe you're using it again halfway through the year and at the end of the year in those launches. Maybe not because it maybe it has to have seasonal flavor, but you can make those decisions on the fly and know this is, we can reuse this or this needs to be tweaked. The third thing is enroll people before the holidays. So in this last quarter, I want you to be consciously thinking that once probably November 10th hits, you're going to struggle to add people to a program. People don't start programs then. People at that point do say, I'm going to wait till after the holidays because we're traveling for Thanksgiving and then we're going to host and we have the Nutcracker and we have, you know, this and that and the other thing. And they're basically saying, I'm going to wait until I gain that 10 pounds and I'll see you in January. So you got to enroll them before, you know, my deadline of enrolling people, we like to get people involved in programs prior to November if possible. We start programs in October that run through the end of the year. So they're already in, they're already active. Now all we have to do is get them through that one holiday week in November and we're we're golden. We've got them on track and they've been on track for eight weeks by the time we hit December and they're much more successful. So think about how are you doing that? If you're running four week or six week or eight week programs, when do they hit and You can be transparent about this. Just be very honest. We're getting you enrolled now because if you're not, you're probably not going to start a program at the beginning of November, are you? Right? And let them acknowledge for themselves. Yep, you nailed me, right? (laughs) Okay. Number four is use holidays. Look at what's coming. October, in case you didn't know it, is a specific month and a day that you probably want to acknowledge if you are also serving women in midlife, as many of you are. It is National Menopause Month and it is Osteoporosis Day. I'm sorry, I think I got that backward. Um, Maybe. Gosh, I'm having a brain fart. (laughs) 
<laughs> Can I say that on a podcast? So it's osteoporosis day, October 20th, and it's menopause month. I think I got that right. Sheesh. All right. It's been a long day. Can you tell? But take advantage of that. And and of course, there are other months and days, but this is a key month and day for us. It is also National Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And, and yet for me, I don't spend a lot of time on that anymore. There was a time that I did. And now though, the broader topic is uh, menopause and hitting on osteoporosis day is also super important. Think about open houses. Now, that's not actually a holiday, but it it is the holiday feel, right? When do open houses occur? Beginning of November, you know, sometimes the end of October, they're having, you know, autumn open houses, your, uh, what, like the gift stores, the gift shops, the, um, the, what do I want to say? Boy, I'm having trouble with my words today. <laughs> the plant kind of businesses, the florists, thank you, goodness, <laughs> the florists, you know, because of the greenery and the holly and the ivy and the poinsettias, you know, they'll be having open houses for decor. And, you know, they know that the sooner they get people to start buying, the more people buy throughout the season. But, you know, when people are getting excited and getting planning and getting everything ducks in a row, they feel good. They are more likely to buy your program too. Don't let too much time go by though. Early November is a good time to do an open house or a gift guide. Think about that. I never, ever, ever wait to create a gift guide until December. I often am approached by people, you know, I would love to be in your gift guide. And I'm like, you know, that ship sailed about four weeks ago. Sorry, should have been reaching out in October because otherwise it's too late. So think about that yourself. When is a good fit for you? Black Friday, Thanksgiving, Cyber Monday, right? Hit them all. Make sure you've got a plan for them. 12 days of Christmas. Look, we don't have to agree on when those 12 days are, right? That can be the 12 days leading up to Christmas Day. That can be the 12 days before the end of the year. That can be the first 12 days of December. It can be whatever you want it. It's you're the boss. You're the boss, babe. So it's your game, it's your rules, but it's simply a play on words. And and everybody kind of understands understands that. And it's a nice number, you know, 10 day challenge, 12 day challenge, 14 day challenge, that realm is doable. So think about, do you want to do something around that? Some people I've done 12 smoothies of Christmas. I've done 12 gift days of Christmas, highlighting one of our programs every single day and putting it on special. Um, we do a 12 day challenge for, um, Calm, actually, Blissmas. It was the week before Christmas. And that is a holiday I've just put in here because what I want to draw your attention to is the fact that Christmas this year, and you want to look at whatever calendar year you're listening to this in, it matters. The end of your sales will probably happen a week before Christmas. So this year, Christmas, I believe, is on a Monday. So the 18th is on a Monday. That week, the 18th through the rest of the week, people are checked out. They are not buying your fitness program for January. It's too late. So I want you to think about that. If you're selling some program in December for January, get on it, get on it early, push it hard. And it doesn't mean that it will be open and for sale. It just means you're not going to have many sales during that week. Think about it. People are traveling. You give them, they've got Saturday and Sunday off. Monday's a holiday for a lot of people. Tuesday will be off, but not everybody. But those people People are going to take the Friday and the Thursday off before. And then mentally, you know, on Wednesday and Tuesday, they're packing. It's the week is gone. Just figure that. So it's important that your sales end probably Sunday the 17th on this particular calendar year. Number five, and we are coming to a rapid halt here, preview your goals and postmortem breakdowns. Meaning, do a breakdown of every promotion you do, everything you're planning, how many, what was your goal, 
test it, don't guess it. We would tell that to any of our clients, wouldn't we? Same is true when you're talking marketing and sales. You want to know how you do. You want to know what your target was, how many you wanted in the seat, how many sales you wanted, how much revenue you wanted. And if you didn't get it, why? What did you do to try to get it that wasn't enough? You don't want to just do that next time, right? So you want to record and document everything. So never shoot blanks. Never just hope and try. Calculate and then make it happen. That's you setting the goal. And ideally, you know, the first time you do it, you have to simply set a goal. You have to say, you know, here's how much revenue I I want. Here is kind of going market rate, the range. Here's where I'm going to go. Maybe you go high, maybe you go lower, maybe you go mid. You know, it's all of those things. You can decide, but the second time when you have a PR, you've already done it once. Now you have a goal because you want to beat that, right? And you will look back at what worked and didn't. How much is your time worth? You have to be asking that question. And I've worked with a lot of private clients who underestimate this. So don't do this to yourself. How much would you have to pay someone else to do what you're doing? If you were going to buy a coaching session with me, how much would that be? Maybe you feel I don't have that quite that much experience or I don't have a best-selling book or a TEDx talk or I don't have 40 years of experience, but where would you fall in terms of your expertise? And then I want you to do this. Look at your track record because your track record is as valuable as anyone else's. If you are consistently proving you get results, predictable results, because you use a methodology, you can raise your rates any day, no matter what, no matter what, but you have to have that proven consistent result with a specific method or system. If you don't have that, you've got to go back and get it. Okay. And last but not least, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. So just because a program didn't work if you launched it, don't get rid of it. If it was a good idea, it was probably a good idea, okay? But maybe it was the title. Maybe it was the messaging that you used to market it. Maybe you used a title that meant something to you, but it was too scientific and it wasn't the way the customer describes the problem. And I can help you unpack all that, but I hope what I just gave you was ways to look and reflect back on on programs you've looked at in your past all by yourself. All right. The links and the show notes will all be at fitnessmarketingmastery.com forward slash health fitness professional. I'm sorry, health professional business growth strategies, tongue tied on a Tuesday, health professional business growth strategy. And that will be show notes at fitness marketing mastery. What are you waiting for? The world needs you right now more than ever. 